And we're ready to continue. And let's welcome our next speaker, Janneke van Ooyen, Community Manager at Crytek. Hello, Janneke. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Fantastic, yes. How are you today? Hi. Yeah, good, how are you? Oh, very good, thank you. Um, how's everything going with you? Where are you located? I am currently located in Frankfurt, Germany. All oh, right. Working from yeah. home still, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, hope you enjoyed it. It's been nice waking up a bit later. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know the drill. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good one. Thank you for joining us today. We're very excited to have you in the studio and all ready to listen to your presentation. Over to yes. you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, in general, there were already very interesting presentations. So I hope I can answer some questions that I also saw um, asked there. So I'm going to talk about community management, uh, where it's more than just memes. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Because oftentimes, as a community manager, you get questions like, oh, yeah, you just post some memes on the internet or you're on social media, or whatnot. Um, but there is actually a lot more to community management. And I hope to uh, yeah, give some information about that during this presentation. So a little summary real quick uh, before we start. So we're going to talk a bit about the responsibilities and requirements. So what people expect from community managers. Uh, we dive a bit more into what community management exactly is, uh, what platforms you want to be on. Um, I'm going to go for four parts of community management, and um, I'm going to talk a bit about community, community advocates and uh, some advice for people that want to go into community management. So as a community manager, you wear a lot of different hats. Um, as my personal experience, uh, I work for Crytek for three years now almost, and I work on Hunt Showdown, and also uh, we're preparing for the Crisis Remaster, which is very excited. Uh, we did a little bit of the climb uh, for Oculus Quest, and in my team, I do a lot of things. So like, obviously we do social media where we also have a social media manager who is very focused on that. Um, I manage the Discord, I manage our moderation team, I uh, do influencer relations, I host and produce live streams. So there's a lot of different things community managers often do. So when you look at a community manager, it can vary, very, very broad. Um, Especially, for example, if you have a bigger team size, they will be way more focused on one thing usually. And people that work, for example, for an indie company, they will usually only, you know, do most of the things by themselves because there's usually not a lot of people on their team. So there are quite a lot of different job listing requirements when you search for a community manager position. And I wanted to go over a few things that you usually see or sometimes see uh, in some of these listings. So first off, it's quite basic, uh, general acknowledgement of social media, different platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, those are more the standard. And then obviously also Discord, which is very popular for the gaming community, uh, Reddit, uh, and the live, more live video content, YouTube and Twitch. And then also for the more newer audience or the younger audience, rather, uh, Snapchat and TikTok. So for our game, we are currently on all those platforms, minus Snapchat and TikTok, although we do provide music on uh, TikTok from our game, so that's really good. But then the next, okay, so the next is already work with influencers, so influencer relations. Uh, that is something that I do as well. It's still quite standard. It happens for a lot of community managers. Um, and then also you have to be a streamer. Uh, so as also was said in a fireside chat, there are quite a lot of people that might not be comfortable with being on camera or they're just not used to live streaming. But in a lot of jobs for community management, it is still sort of like expected that you're used to it and are you aware of it? Uh, but not everyone does it. So that's already an extra skill or you know challenge you have to take. Then we also have to have some event management uh, experience, uh, running and planning events. So we in our team, organize uh, community events where we go on conferences, uh, where we'll host a mixer for broadcasters. Uh, but we also do some moderation events and then obviously bigger events for us are organized by an events manager. So we're very lucky to have her. Uh, video publishing, graphic design experience is another thing that also gets asked from community managers. Um, so personally, I have graphic design experience, so that helped me a lot. Uh, but we have dedicated graphic designers in our team. But there are times where you work indeed, again, for a smaller company often that you just don't have that experience yet. And then was one that I came across that 
obviously is not the norm for a lot of people, uh, but willingness to work around the clock and expect to work sometimes on weekends and evenings and look at your position as a lifestyle rather than a job. I mean, luckily this is very rare, but it is unfortunately still expected by some companies that you have to accept that you have to work outside of work hours. And um, I mean, for us, if I work over hours, I could just, you know, report them to my to my company and would just get the hours back. So that's all really well organized. But unfortunately, it is still sort of a norm by some companies that this doesn't happen, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a great, quite a lot of expectations. Uh, and obviously, there's other things, but just an overall idea of what, what you can come across, which can be overwhelming. So what is the basis of community management? So we build relationships, we maintain relationships. And just like plants, if you give them a lot of attention, they will grow and they become healthy, big plants. Um, so what it also has is if you grow your community to become loyal, to become big, they're often also way more forgiving for any mistakes or delays that happen because there will always still be bugs in your game. And we will always have to make sure that the people stay happy, even though you know they're a little bit upset at the time. So effective community management also helps marketing because when there is a bigger audience that listens, you can have a drive or drive a greater traffic towards that uh, marketing uh, initiative. So that's all a great way that community management comes in. So here a little bit of data, 63% uh, of customers will spend more on brands which are loyal to. So obviously if you have DLC content or merchandise, if they're you know into your brand, into your company, they're just more 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 expected to spend, um, as well as people are more uh, likely to stick to your brand because they're part of a community. I mean, we all know that if you're a part of a community and you have friends, that it's very unlikely that you move on to a next project because all the friends are still there and you want to hang out with your friends. We're also community guards. So... <laughs> We're kind of at the forefront of things, uh, which is unfortunately also a lot of negativity at times. Um, uh, even also being a woman, it happens that you get a lot of negativity because you're misunderstood and they don't think you understand the games or that you are bad at them. Unfortunately, I'm not always the best at our game, but I do my best. Uh, but yeah, in general, we just protect our developers. We protect also the developers from outwards, uh, like communication that they do. So like we educate them uh, if they are online on like, for example, our official platforms, but as well as also make them aware when they are on the public platforms for themselves. Uh, but yeah, we always have to remind, just stay positive, even though things can sometimes get rough, you don't want to lash out to your community because in the end, your customer is king. Uh, and that also counts in community management. So. With community management, you want to know where your community hangs out. Every platform has a purpose. So these days, there are a wide variety of platforms, um, especially if you check for the social media. So you have the basics like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as I said earlier, um, and then also the live stream or video platforms. So like we personally stream on Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, YouTube, and then on the Steam store page. So there's a lot of channels that we have to keep check on. Uh, but this is just because we want to be exclusive or inclusive for um, our community because some people just prefer certain platforms or they already watch their favorite content creators of those platforms. And we want to make sure that we go to where our community hangs out because if we don't do that, then obviously you know we're not gonna reach the people that we are gonna be able to reach if we actually spend time there and we lose on customers. And for some of the platforms, uh, we don't really manage them ourselves. So for example, Reddit is a special example because Reddit is kind of, they're kind of particular in a way that they like the developers not to be meddled too much in their conversations because it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just the culture of Reddit, I guess. Uh, so the way we did it, we did originally start our own Reddit and then we decided to move it over to moderators where we'll still have a presence as in a sense, if we reply, people can see that we are from Crytek but we do try to keep it away uh, and we don't manage it ourselves like we do with our Discord or Facebook or other social media. And as I already said earlier, we are not on TikTok. I mean, maybe we still want to do a bit more of it uh, because it is quite popular nowadays, uh, but we have our own music. So our, our, our audio team has created amazing music for our game um, and people love it. It's like 
doing great. Like everyone can watch it on or listen to it on uh, Spotify and stuff. So that's in a sense also a platform. Um, and yeah, they can use these to create videos on TikTok. So that's a creative way. So with community management, you can sort of put it in four parts. Uh, these are listening, engaging, moderating, and measuring. So listening. Every relationship you're in, it's very important if you listen. It's not just listening to your audience, but also monitoring what they're talking about. So you check your, obviously, your social media, the communities, but also things that they're interested in. So if you have, for example, in our Discord, we have an off-topic channel. You, we usually just jump in there as well to see, you know, what are the other interests that they have? Uh, what are their hobbies? Uh, other games that they enjoy? Because in the end, we are all gamers and we all love a lot of the same things. And we can use those opportunities to spark conversations later on and then obviously get positive sentiment. Because the thing with working as a community manager, it's sort of that you create the human face of a company. Because back in the day, obviously, when games were not so much games as a service, there were not a lot of community managers and community management is still a relatively new job, I'd say. And since we're able to you know, show ourselves that we are also interested in the things that they're interested in, makes us, us just seem, seem more human. Um, but yeah, we just track conversations. Sometimes it is also a great way to jump on, for example, a hashtag that is popular or a movement that's important that you want to speak out of um, and use all those things to get a good idea. What's going on? What are people talking about? What are people complaining about? What are people happy about? And use that uh, in your, in your uh, strategies. So engaging, uh, talking to your community. I'm just quickly... Um, so starting and starting and keeping conversations going. So what we do, we engage, uh, for example, on social media where we obviously have our content. So we post, you know, news posts, we post uh, fan arts, we post uh, just clips from our games, but we also ask questions. So we want to make sure that when we post something that we can get a reaction back from our community to then engage further with and create buzz. Um, and especially in our Discord, it's a lot easier because there is a Q&A section where people can directly talk with people. Uh, we have some developers available in the, in the channels as well. So also some developers answering Reddit. And people are more inclined to also ask more questions and get more information if you see that they speak up. Because oftentimes people don't expect that, you know, a developer or even a community manager, like that they answer a question. Sometimes it's like, oh, wow, I totally did not expect that you would answer my question. And they're just really happy. And it's, it's great just to see that people are excited that you're giving a reply to their question or help them out. And in general, you always have to make sure that when there's issues being reported, that you get those answers or questions answered because that just will make them positive even when they have problems. Yeah. Um, so, and again, also just make sure that you engage also in some off-topic conversations because as I said before, it just makes you seem more human. It knows that you're all interested in all aspects of the game and just keep things going. So one thing we do of that, uh, that is very important is moderation. So, Always make sure you have clear rules in your community. I know that some communities are a bit more loose and they let things go, but there can always be a discussion if, for example, uh, something offensive gets said, but there's no clear rule stated for it. And I mean, this has happened for us uh, as well <clears throat> in the past where you, you have a rule, but it's not completely clear. So people can try to circumvent these, but it is just important that you start with a rule set for like your social channels or for your game. So we have a code of conduct for a game that are rules that people have to, you know, comply to. We have specific rules for our discord. We have specific rules for our Reddit. Um, and then we also, on top of that, use a moderation team. So as a community manager, obviously there's so many channels there is day and night conversations that you will not be able to be at because well, you have to sleep. Um, so we have a moderation team and those moderators also moderate or live streams. So when we do uh, dev live streams or gameplay live streams, we have people in the chat that monitor like the conversations and make sure that we have no you know toxic people. And the moderators um, also have a, like the system that we have is we have contributors 
and moderators. So contributors are technically the pre-moderators and they don't have any rights, but they are like highlighted because they have a specific color in the street or in the chat. Uh, and they will help answer people's questions. So when we look for moderators, we first give them a contributor role, which is basically the trail period of them. And then we'll see how they behave. So what we look for in a good moderator, first off, is always be active and be friendly. You don't want someone who, you know, tries to slam their bad hammer everywhere and is very full of themselves because that just will create more toxicity and that's something you do not want. And also you have to make sure that you have moderators and just in general as a community manager to understand that you have to ignore trolls. There will always be people that are there just to spread toxicity and also just to, you know, fool around or just make the community sour. I just want to get rid of them. So we work with a system uh, specifically in our Discord, for example, where we have a bot set up. And when someone is offensive, let's say it's a light offense, they're just breaking some rules, we'll have the moderator or myself will you know let them know hey you have made a mistake by using a, a command in our bot which then logs the warning and when we log the warning we can obviously see if someone does the same events again or something different that we have tracked what they have done bad previously uh, to then give them either a timeout or a permanent ban so we usually work with a timeout first which we use the bot for as well because there's no feature yet in discord that like you can kick people but you can't permanently ban or like temporarily ban them um so we just use the bot to then give them a temporarily timeout we call it the naughty quarter <laughs> Uh, and then afterwards, they can come out after a week. And if they behave again, like it's fine. But obviously, all those offenses are still tracked. So that just gives us a really good way to keep our community clean uh, from any toxicity, from any negativity. Because there's also people that are technically not breaking the rules, but they just bring a very negative demeanor to your to your like community where they're always like complaining or whatnot. So it's always very tricky to handle those people because you just, you know, they, they're not breaking any rules, but they're still bringing the community down. So usually what I do is like, I'll just have a conversation with those people, explain them what their behavior is doing, and then hopefully, you know, see if they can figure out that they have to behave better or uh, eventually they'll just get a time out to think things through without talking. Uh, but yeah, so having a good moderation team, very important. You can't do everything alone. You can't answer questions when you're asleep, but they're able to. Measuring. So analyzing how your brand is perceived and your game is perceived and getting feedback. So the way we measure uh, our feedback and uh, just how well our community is doing and how the game is doing, uh, we do weekly sentiment reports. So sentiment reports is where we check every channel, so like all our social media channels, and we check for... Um, Positive sentiment, mixed sentiment, and negative sentiment. So like positive obviously speaks for itself when something's great. Uh, mixed is when there are, you know, mixed opinions about something or there is an issue, but it's not affecting that many people. And then you have negative sentiment, which is obviously negative. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to give proper numbers or like you know, measure ROI, return of investment for sentiment and feedback. Because with sentiment reports, the way I always describe it, it's sort of like what the town, the, the talk of the town is. So like you live in a small town, there's always a lot of people, everyone knows each other, um, and some people are talking about something. And because it's a small town, everyone will hear about it because it gets, you know, slung around, mouth to mouth. Um, but you don't know exactly how many people are there talking about it. So that's what we do usually when sentiment is how I describe it. Um, we just see what people are talking about most. And then if we want to get actual numbers, we will do, you know, surveys uh, specifically, for example, if there is a, um, a very controversial feature that was added or something that they're just not sure about, we just want to get extra data and we'll go into detail and get actual numbers that we can also present to uh, our team and our management. And then also we do the weekly sentiments regardless and also whenever we have updates so people really know what's going on and what people's opinions are after updates. Then also something, there are some tools that measure sentiments, but the issue with most of those tools is, at least unfortunately till this day, there's also no bots for Discord yet, I really wish. Um, the issue with that is that often it like generates some numbers, but most of the feedback, it's very abstract. So it will have like bug or disconnect, but you don't really know why people are disconnecting or what bug they're having. Uh, so what we do for that is just, 
we just go into detail. We, either we look for keywords in our channels to figure out what people are talking about, but at least that we get a better idea of uh, what it actually is that the issue is. And then sometimes we'll manually count how many people are talking about it when we report an issue to our dev team. Um, for feedback, we used to use user voice, which is, it's a great tool, definitely, um, where people can input an idea and then other people can upvote that idea. And the only issue that we had with it was that there was no downvote option. So with, um, with, without downvotes, like people can like an idea and it can get a lot of upvotes, but you still don't really know if there's people that actually don't like that idea. So what we did based on another discord that I'd seen, uh, we put a, a feedback suggestions uh, channel in our Discord where people can put an idea. And then we have a bot that automatically upvotes and downvotes the idea so people can vote on either options. So sometimes you have ideas that get a lot of upvotes, but at the same time, also a lot of downvotes, which kind of negates the, you know, the want for it, basically. So it gives us a better understanding of what our community wants. Um, and then what we do is we gather all of those uh, like top voted ideas per month and report that to our dev team so that they exactly know, you know, this is what our community wants. Some features might be big, some features might be small, but to get an understanding of what the community wants and needs. Um, and I mean, the same thing, we have Q&A channels for regular help, uh, for regular questions. We do Q&As after developer live streams. Uh, overall, gameplay live streams are <laughs> an a, a continuous Q&A uh, where we'll just try our best to do questions. And obviously you can't always answer everything because there is a lot of people, uh, but just try to see, you know, to try and you obviously see some questions reported and make sure that you always answer those questions because this is obviously what your community cares about. So something extra that you can do is rewarding your community. So you already see it in um, Facebook, for example, they added the Facebook top fan feature, which means that when someone is interacting and answering a lot of your you know, posts or replying, you get a special badge basically. And I mean, everyone as a kid probably has had something similar for us. It was when you did well, you get a sticker, uh, which made me extremely motivated because I want to get all the stickers. Um, so the same thing you do, uh, you can do with your community. So we have a few things in place to reward our community. We have um, a community manager or like a influencer program. So we have a partner program. We give our partners, uh, we give them exclusive merch, we give them DLC keys, uh, we give them extra or like early access to specific features, or we give them already information. Um, they have a specific Discord where they can talk with some of our developers and ask questions. Um, so like extra service, it's like a white glove treatment, basically. But we also do something for our moderators because most of the moderation teams for most companies and games are free. So you have a lot of people that are helping you day in, day out with so many questions, customer support, whatnot. And oftentimes those people don't get rewarded. So we wanted to do something extra for our moderators. So what we do is we take them to um, conventions if we are able to. So like they get to go to one or two conventions a year, depending on how active they've been. And um, I mean, obviously they're also great booth help <laughs> on top of that, but they, they always want to. Um, and we also had like our moderation meetup in our office last year. Unfortunately, due to Corona, we can't really do something similar this year um, where we had, you know, we took them out for dinner. We had them talk to all of our teams because they are already talking to some of the developers because we have a special chat for both the moderators and contributors. So basically contributor is where everyone is in with the devs and the moderators and et cetera, because the contributors still have questions oftentimes that the moderators already can answer or they just want to directly talk to the devs. Um, and the same for the moderators, they have a specific chat where also things, you know, more dedicated to the moderators. Uh, they also get early info about things in the game. Uh, we also give them exclusive uh, merchandise. So we try to reward those people as much as possible. Because if you have advocates for the game, like it's a super strong um, like feature, well not feature, but a strong motivator for people to be involved because you see so many people, you know, talk about your game positively. They see that they're being seen basically. And the same goes for fan communities, wikis, and other uh, special like fan pages. Uh, we get quite a lot of people that make fan pages. Uh, so for example, in our discord, um, 
Originally, we started with language specific channels. Do never do that if you can't have the people that kind of goes back a bit to the moderation earlier. Uh, but we had the issue that when we made a lot of language channels, often people keep asking for more because, hey, I speak this language that you don't have. And then we would have people vote. But still, in the end, we ended up with like 30 or so channels that we could not moderate. Um, so what we then did in the end was uh, we said, OK, we don't do any language specific channels, but you can have your own language discord for Hunt. And then we'll promote those within our Discord. So we have about, I think it's like 20 or so different Discord channels. And some of them have like over two, 3,000 members. So they're doing amazing. Uh, and then I was talking to Discord if there was something also that we could do for them. So we had an ability or the possibility to give some of our biggest communities uh, special rights to get like a custom URL. So they're like Hunt Russia, Hunt France, Hunt Germany, so that they have an extra space. Uh, and we also specifically highlight the um, promoted communities uh, in a different Discord channel where they send out from the other language Discord channels. So just to give them a bit of recognition for what they do, because obviously, they also manage communities for us that we are unable to speak to. So like we do have a Russian, a Chinese and a German community manager that are all um, remote, that work a few lesser hours, but they still, you know, have already communities that they were able to jump into and support and give more like an official presence, so to say, while well, they have been promoting us for a long time. So we also find it really important that we give those communities, for example, keys to share with their game or community and uh, also some information sometimes earlier to, for example, wikis or uh, people that want to make a fan site so that they can prepare for news because all of those people are getting informed by them. And you would be crazy to not reward that because they're technically doing you a huge favor by doing free work. And we should like that. <laughs> so one thing about community management um, that is very important is to take care of yourself this is more on the personal side of like what it is to be a community manager because a lot of us are guilty and have done at some point or might still do it sometimes i mean i'm myself included will sometimes still check after work reply to a few messages in discord reply to a few messages in twitter and obviously that's how it works and things can get crazy because you're already doing a lot of you know different jobs within community management you always have to make sure that you take care of yourself. So something that I had to learn was try to not always be online. Try to take time for yourself when you have a day off or when you have a weekend. Just don't go on Discord. Don't go on social media and have a social media free weekend. It's always important to take your time because at some point there will always be people that keep asking questions and you want to help everyone. And that's very understandable because you all... A lot of times you feel like you might let your community down or, oh, they have such a bad issue and like I can be there for them. And also there are some people that, for example, have a lot of personal problems and start seeing you as a friend. Uh, this also happens with, for example, like influencers, because they're always taking part in conversations with you. They just start seeing you as friends. So sometimes when they have a bad day, they will start messaging you. And you have to be really clear that you, you know, explain that you're an art therapist, even though you wish you could help them. Um, they're there when you work and you can answer work-related questions, but keep thinking about yourself as well, because that can really get mentally taxing. And another thing that is very important is ask for help. You often work with people on your team that have you know, experience in marketing or PR. And there are some, you know, things that you also have to work on, but you can always ask other people in your company for help. And obviously there will be smaller teams sometimes where you don't have that ability, but there is a lot of communities also for community managers, for example, that you can join to get that information or to ask something that you're not sure about. Uh, so definitely don't think that you're alone uh, and that even though things can get a little bit much at times, just don't be afraid to ask for help, basically. So then I also wanted to give some information for people that want to go into community management because community management is a really, really awesome job. I personally really love the ability to do a lot of different things. It really fits my personality. Like I started off doing hotel management uh, because my parents had a restaurant, even though I didn't really want to work in the restaurant or anything, but it was just in case that I, you know, wasn't sure if they, you know, wanted to stop that I had knowledge if I had to do it. 
um, I always wanted to work in games, but I also wanted to be a lawyer and an interior designer and God knows what I wanted to do. So for me, I ended up in community management um, and it was just really exciting. It was something that I really loved to do. So after hotel management, I studied art and technology where I also learned some skills like video editing. I mean, I knew already Photoshop, but I learned more about Photoshop. So like things that you can use in community management. The same with my hotel management studies was you learn things about hospitality, how you have to deal with customers, um, marketing things. So like there's a lot of skill sets that you can learn also in different studies because there are communication studies, but there's no specific community manager studies these days yet. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you study per se, but if you want to get a community management and you don't know where to start, oftentimes I say, just start by either creating content or learn some skills like Photoshop or video editing, which can give you an extra edge if you're applying because there are people that are looking for something like that. Um, maybe start a fan site. Like if there is a game that you're passionate about, um, or uh, you are just interested, you can just start a fan website or a wiki or you know even a Discord server. They're really easy to set up. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do, but also, for example, when I started, um, how I got into Community Manager exactly was I was streaming on Twitch. Like I started six and a half years ago. Um, so I already started going to conventions. I knew a lot of people. And then sometimes I ran into someone who worked for an indie company and were like, yeah, you seem great. Do you want to work for us? And I was like, yes, I do. Um, and then eventually, so I worked for them remote. Uh, then eventually as a streamer again, I was doing a uh, play test for a game called uh, for Streamline for a company Proletarian in Boston uh, at PAX East. And I was talking to their community manager, Jenny, it was amazing. Um, and I saw that they had a position open. I was like, why the heck not? Do you guys want to hire me? Uh, so I went there, I went to Boston, uh, worked there for nine months because unfortunately my visa had to end, uh, strict rules in America. Um, so, and then I just applied at Crytek and now I've been here for three years. So what I give as advice is just try, like go for it. There's always um, times where you feel, oh, this asks for four years experience or uh, this one expects me to know this and this and this. If you never try, you never know you're going to get it. So like we have a saying in the Netherlands called, um, you already have a no, you can always make it a yes. So basically just go for it. Like there will be definitely a lot of declines, but at some point you will get a yes. I truly believe that. And it's a great job. You can do so many things. So I really hope to see more people going into community management because it's, for me, it's it's a true passion. Like I get to do so many things and yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> so did you get any of that? Um, what did we talk about? We talked a bit about what community management is, uh, where why it's important to have good community management. Also a bit how I started, um, get moderators. Definitely very important. And if you want to get in community management, make sure that you take care of yourself, learn some skills and just enrich yourself. And yeah, I hope there are any questions. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation, Yannicke. It was fantastic. I loved your the style of your presentation, by the way. The I drew those myself. Did you? Oh, yeah. wow. We're all impressed here. Okay, yeah, I wish my, my modern, my other monitor there where I had the questions stopped working. So like, no, I can't see anything anymore. Okay, well, that was fantastic to be honest with you. Well done. Yeah. We have a few questions for you from the audience. Um, yeah. The first one from Susanna Liskova. Do you think there is a difference in style of community management when it comes to one-time purchase games, premium shoe, comparing to live games that heavily rely on frequent updates and events? So you mean games as a service, basically, yeah. to games that are, yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely think there is a big difference. I mean, especially because obviously, usually when you launch a game that is uh, just a game, it's done. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of feedback that can happen. Uh, so a lot of that feedback loop that you have with games as a service, it doesn't really happen. So for us, because on Shonen as a games as a service, uh, we're able to do a lot of things that people want and we keep developing it and there will be updates coming out constantly. So you definitely have more abilities to talk to your community in a sense where you get information from them and you know that they can give information to others. Um, and with games as a service, so for example, we have Crisis. 
uh, everyone knows prices probably. <laughs> um, but like with that, it's like the game is pretty much as it is. So we don't really add more things to it afterwards or whatnot. So there's definitely a difference, um, but I don't think it matters too much. But you just like you just got to focus then more on other things like you can focus more on, you know, fan art or um, creating uh, fun contests or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answered it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And another one from Susanna. Um, you said at the beginning, it seems like a lot of companies nowadays um, basically require community managers to have some experience with public speaking and content creation on YouTube and Twitch. Do you think those two skills are essential to be a good one, a good community manager? I wouldn't say essential, but it's always good to have additional skills that can make you stand out. And that's that's why I also advise people to like just practice a lot of things or like just enrich yourself in different skills. I mean, sometimes there will be indeed community managements, uh, community managers um, that are not so comfortable speaking in the public. And there are roles where there are people that are community management, especially bigger companies. Uh, where you're just focused on like talking on the forums or keeping the Reddit in case or the Steam forums or um, social media posting where you don't really have to be on camera. Um, so for those, no, I don't think it's per se uh, an essential skill, but it would be a good to have skill, especially if you want to look for a longer term, because usually in community management, like you will be at a lot of different companies at some point it's not like that many people are always working for the same company for 10 years and you always do mm -hmm. the same thing um so just if you think about it also for the future like obviously live streaming is very uh, becoming more and more popular i mean we're doing live uh, conference right now mm -hmm. um so yeah just i just if you can do it or want to do it i would say get some information or try it um but it's not per se a necessity mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And well, in that topic still, uh, do you still stream or and is it allowed to stream outside of Crytek? So luckily I'm allowed to stream, uh, but it is not very pop or like it's not it's quite rare. Like you don't have a lot of game companies that allow you to still stream personally. Um, I mean, I personally have been allowed, luckily. I mean, as long as obviously the thing is the way it is also like you have to make sure that you're still representable like if i stream i still would have to abide by the rules that i do when i'm on social media mm -hmm. like i don't want to say anything offensive i don't want to you know come off rude or whatnot so it's just as long as you're very you know uh, aware of what you're saying and like keep in mind that you are always a representative of your company no matter where mm -hmm. you are um it's fine. So like, I mean, to be fair, I'm lucky because I do know that there is a lot of companies where they just don't allow it. And mm -hmm. in a sense, I always like felt a bit confused by it because like we're all, we all love games. It's not because I personally stream something else that people are going to run up to that game. I mean, most of them, they're JRPGs. They're not interested at all, but yeah. <laughs> well, good for you, I guess. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and the same question from Dejan Cosette. Um, Another one, I mean, outside of Corona, is it possible in your opinion to be a community manager from home office? Well, it feels like the majority of the work can be done indeed from home these days. What do you think? Or yeah, you oh, with the team def no, no, definitely. Community management is very doable. I mean, obviously for us, like when we do the live streams, uh, we usually do them from the office, but even those we've been doing online through Zoom and stuff. Um, but no, community management, there's a lot of remote options for community managers to work uh, from home. So because obviously like social media and everything, it happens online. So if you're already online, you just, you know, either you sit in the office. I do prefer working in an office personally because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, you can more easily walk to someone's desk and ask them questions, but you also feel a bit more part of the team uh, than when you're working remotely, because that's what I was doing before, like two years is uh, when I worked my first job into community management or influence relations. Um, but it's definitely possible. Yeah, there's quite a lot of remote options. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, one more question. Um, is there maybe the same process of community management uh, that you guys use at Crytek that could be applicable to a smaller company? 
Um, yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, also because like, while we are quite a big company, we do still have like different teams. So like we don't, everyone is not working on the same game, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, I personally already do a lot of different things that in some game companies that are way bigger, uh, get done by multiple people. So like influencer relations is a different job. Uh, someone who does live streams could be a different one, et cetera, et cetera. So for us, um, yeah, no, definitely it's, it's definitely doing a lot of multiple things, which is what mm -hmm. you see in smaller companies. Like when I worked for an indie game where it was like 23 people in the whole game team or like the whole development team, basically, which is also community. Um, I also just did, I just did multiple things. Uh, so definitely that doing multiple roles and being, you know, mm -hmm. and skilled in different things, basically. Okay, thank you very much. And the final question for now from Igor Lima. Uh, do you think that allowing people to contribute to your game, for example, with 3D models and art, is it a nice thing or can it be trouble for you? So we actually have done a specific contest uh, for uh, designing some skins for weapons. So like, uh, overall, we don't accept people that, you know, sometimes people say, oh, uh, I can make you a new map for your game or we'll make you this for your game, uh, which is nice, obviously, but there's a lot of standards that have to be upheld and then also a lot of legal uh, legal things that you have to keep in mind. Um, mm -hmm. But we did a, a contest, which oh, they turned out so well, uh, a, turn, uh, a contest for people to design skins for some of our weapons in game. And uh, originally we had one person that was going to be the winner, but then we had so many really good applications that we ended up with three. Um, so as long as there are clear like legal rules, because you have to have contest rules, you have to make sure that everyone is, you know, signed off that they can actually use this uh, in our game, because obviously there's, you know, if there's mm -hmm. uh, premium currency or what involved um, or just purchase and uh, copyright laws, uh, as long as there's clear rules uh, for things like contests and stuff, it's definitely possible. And I think it's a great thing because they get the recognition for something that they've done. Like we can reward them with many great things because of that. And people get to enjoy awesome content that was made by other players. So mm -hmm. definitely, I definitely think we could contribute and that's a nice thing. Thank you very much for all your answers. It was a fantastic presentation indeed. Um, guys, if you have any questions for Yannicka, please feel free to ask them in the chat, Q&A with speakers, and yeah, I'm sure Yannicka, you'll be happy to answer them afterwards. Yeah, of course. Thank, Thank you very you for much for joining me. us. Have Thank a fantastic day. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.